Hi, I'm Richard Morai, Senior Minister at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center, and I want to thank you for visiting our website and for tuning in to today's message. If you feel inspired by today's talk, I really encourage you to make a donation by hitting that button below and making a contribution to this ministry. It'll allow us to continue these messages online and to do the great work we do here at Unity of Phoenix, which is to inspire people to live better lives. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for your support, and we hope to see you at a Sunday real soon. So this morning is the culmination of our Broadway series, and uh, today's song, Patterns, comes from the Broadway musical, Baby. And it's from a book by, um, who was a Sybil Pearson, and it's based on a story developed with Susan Yankovich. And the music is by David Shire, and the lyrics is by Richard Matvey, Jr. I need to do that because I learned early on in Nashville, if you didn't give songwriters and singers credit, they wouldn't do a good job for you the next time. So <laughs> caught that pretty quick. So the story concerns the reactions of three couples, and each one of these couples is expecting a child. The show had its first run on Broadway uh, from 1983 through 1984, and it highlights these couples as they live on a university campus dealing with the painful yet rewarding and agonizingly funny consequences of conceiving a baby. One couple is college students, and they're barely at the beginning of their adult lives. And then the next couple is in their 30s, and they're having trouble, trouble conceiving but they are determined to try, which I always thought is probably more fun than actually conceiving, but... <laughs> Jeez. but then they're, they're still willing to try. And then there are the middle-aged couple who were looking forward to seeing their last child graduate from college when after a night of unexpected, unexpected passion, they get a surprise pregnancy. Am I blushing? Face feels flush. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of be all over the place this morning because I've got a lot to say and not enough time to take this subject as deep as I'd actually like to take it because I understand patterns. I understand thought patterns. I understand behavior patterns understand patterns pretty good. So I'm a true proud father of two children who are 49 and 50 right now, so they probably wouldn't appreciate me calling them children. And I still don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an intentional thing. But if you're parents, you probably know that already. And if you're not parents, if you're ever intending or not intending to become, don't be surprised. So I can tell you about some of the lines in the song that Sally Joe talked about, because there have been times in my life when I've wanted to run from something that my soul is actually telling me that I should follow through on. Yet, in my thought patterns, I wanted to run away. 
There's been times in my life when I faced a few curveballs and things didn't go the way I expected them to go after I put in tremendous amounts of labor and energy and thought and everything else that I could do to make it turn out the way I believed it should turn out. I can tell you about a mind bursting into flames on a lot of different levels, believe me. But you're all alive and you know how this experience of life has been because if you've lived it, you know that it is not simple, it is never easy, and there are always challenges. And we, most of us, were created in the image and likeness of God, but we also adopted a lot of human characteristics. And many times those characteristics came from the people we were around, they came from family, they came from stuff that we make up in our own heads. And sometimes they serve us reasonably well, and then there are other times where they do not serve us well. So we develop habits whether it's to be too timid when we should stand strong, or whether it's to be strong when we should be a little weak. We develop habits, and those habits create little lesions in our brains, and they become patterns for us. The most important pattern that I think we set is probably that of behavior. When I was a, a little guy, child, really, um, I had a neighbor who uh, was a bully, and uh, he beat me up two or three times, and he probably weighed at least 50 or 60 pounds more than, uh, than I did at the time. So I'd run home and I'd tell my parents, and uh, one day my father said to me, he said, son, if you don't start standing up, said sooner or later he may beat you to death. So the next time he came to do his beating, he got a surprise Jimmy with a stick. <laughs> and I almost beat him with an inch of his life. And it scared me. I've achieved violence ever since then. I'm not a violent person. And that took me out of my true character. But sometimes we have to get out of our so-called true character and able to be able to make a point in life. And hopefully it's not at that level. But life is violent sometimes. So we have to stand up, we have to speak out, we have to do things that we feel uncomfortable doing in order to make our voices and our spirits heard and seen. That concept by Oscar Wilde, be yourself because everybody else is already taken. Uh, is not just a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about if you don't forget it. <laughs> so it's not just a saying, it's a truth. And uh, it's real important that we understand and adhere to truth. Much of humanity is based on patterns. Behaviors don't change a lot unless we decide as individuals to change them. And if you don't think that's the truth, look at the political situation in the country today and you can see it. And it's not just one party, it's both parties. Uh, because these people have learned that certain behaviors enable them to do things that I consider to be quite out of the ordinary. But I don't want to talk politics these morning, this morning. So what I'm talking about is creating healthy patterns that we can create to change and to transform our lives in positive and constructive ways. And one of the best habits I've been able to create 
that has enabled me to change my life is that of studying unity. Uh, I, re I saw a video of Charles Fillmore years ago where he was standing and he was talking to, uh, looks like six or seven hundred people, and he was talking to them about changing their God concept. And I thought, wow, that's mind-boggling. And then he asked the question, he said, what kind of God do you have? Is your God tricky? Does your God change? Or do you have a strong, standard perception of God that is unchanging? Because that's what you need if you want to be prosperous, if you want to be successful, if you want to win in life. And I've been practicing that pattern for a long, long time now. Served my first ministry 16 years in Nashville, loved it, creativity off the charts. 11 years, 40 some sermons a year, never repeated myself. Took a lot of digging intellectually, but more than that, it took a lot of digging inside here to get to all that crap and to get it up and out and begin to live a life of pure, pureness. Jesus talked about the purity of spirit, and it requires getting all of that stuff out. And you may think you have no stuff, but just watch your patterns, watch your behaviors, and you'll find that you possibly can. When I applied for the job in San Antonio, I was talking to Richard, and he said, do you have any churches in mind? And I said, yeah, I've looked at two or three, and I had. I looked at San Antonio, and I looked at uh, uh, BC and Columbia, and also I looked at Washington, D.C. Uh, so, D.C. was move, moved out of my consciousness pretty quick. <laughs> and British B.C., I thought, wow, probably gets cold there. <laughs> so that left San Antonio. Applied for San Antonio. They called me and they interviewed me and all of this stuff. And one of the first thoughts I had in my mind was, who's going to hire a 75-year-old dude? <laughs> and then I thought, why not? You know, I'm as energetic as a lot of 50s, a lot of 30s even. So let's give it a shot. And I did, and they said yes. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful because I'm looking forward to a new challenge. One of, the, one of the things that consistently concerns me about America is we have this idyllic concept of you work 20, 30, 40 years, then you retire and you do nothing. And to do nothing to me is death. Uh, so I chose to moderate the level of intensity that I function at so that I can function a little longer. And in 10 years, I may apply somewhere else. <laughs> I think life should be fun. I think it should be fun, I think it should be challenging, I think it should be an adventure. And I just want to keep the adventure going. Again, I want to thank you for accepting me, for enabling me to be who I am, uh, for listening to my insanity and being a part of it because that's who I am and I don't have any difficulty claiming it. I just want to keep on doing it. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be a part of Unity of Phoenix. God bless you.